Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we've got kind of a gray day today. A few little showers popping through. Temperature's real nice. Catching a little bit of sun. All in all, not too bad. And as you can see, it's springtime out here too, so that means babies are about and I have to round those up raise them up properly and get some eggs so in today's video we have an experiment fully three months in the making and I got some surprising results so all of these batteries have been sitting at rest for months they all had the same uh, full charge put on them exactly and now months later I've gone back and tested all the voltage in all these batteries and a couple of others that I will show you and as you know they always say to store lithium iron phosphate on the shelf at like 50% full maybe check it every three to six months put a little charge on it and see uh, what the difference is and to help you guys see the difference in some of these batteries. That's what we did for the past few months. And I was kind of surprised at some of the results. So I'm gonna go from battery to battery to show you what everything looks like uh, in this experiment. So the first battery that I put the multimeter on after sitting for a few months was this Time USB 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. All the batteries shown today will be lithium iron phosphate. And when I fully charged it up, you can see I put a sticker on there saying what the uh, date was, December 27th of last year. So exactly three months now. And when I put the multimeter on this, it was reading at 12.8 volts, which is approximately 17% full. That kind of shocked me since I did run this all the way up to full and before I stuck it on the shelf and let it sit there for this experiment. So I currently have it tied up now to some solar and I am charging it up and I'm going to do that to some of the others as well. And I have been asked the question many times by a lot of you over the past couple of years as I've been reviewing these batteries and every one of the batteries I'll show you today I have reviewed and I always said that they've all performed well which they all really have yeah but this is a different kind of an experiment so uh, here's the chins 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery this is their smart version it's got a Bluetooth capability to where you can monitor the state of charge with your phone on this pretty nice now this has actually been sitting here for five months at rest so much longer than the others that I said were resting for three months. And after five months, that's sitting there at 13.2, which we could roughly say is, you know, between 60 and 70% full. So that thing has had a very slow self-discharge rate and looks really, really good after five months of sitting on the shelf. And here we have one of the first batteries we've reviewed oh, way back when. This thing also has been sitting at uh, five months with uh, no additional charge. I, I charged it up fully uh, as well as all of these batteries were charged fully and then disconnected in order to do this experiment to see if we could find any difference. And at five months, 13.18, which is roughly you know, 60% full at least. And this is usually the voltage that batteries are sent out here. So again, ampere time and the chins looking absolutely fantastic. Sitting on the shelf for months, very slow discharge rate. And here is the lead time. Now this one has been sitting exactly three months. It was also uh, fully charged on December 28th. This is uh, lead time, which was is now 
what ampere time used to be called. So ampere time is now lead time. And like I said, I've done reviews on all these batteries. You're welcome to go back and look at. After three full months, sitting there at 13.38. So <laughs> really holding a very, very nice charge. This is their uh, one touch control button. If I turn that off, you can see it goes off. So it has to be turned on to, to register the voltage. But both of those holding a fantastic charge, one after five months, one after three months, really, really good. And here is the VATTER, 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. After three months, 12.62. So that is very, very low, under 10%. Same amount of time that these others have been sitting here, uh, which are doing quite well. So uh, there's a difference there, 12.62. And here we have the Power Queen, 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour battery, 13.81. So that is completely full still after these months of sitting here completely full and that really surprised me 13.8 hasn't dropped a, a bit hardly I mean all of these batteries I must say I took them all up to 14.2 uh, held them there for a full absorption uh, let them go down to their float of 13.5 on the Victron charge controller which I have many videos about so they were all charged up exactly the same way actually on the exact same system this is the difference, 13.8 on the Power Queen. Things holding a massive charge still. And then here we have the Red Odo, 12 volt, 300 amp hour battery. And it is sitting at 13.13. So that one's sitting at roughly 50%. So what does this all mean? Is it because of the quality of cells being the difference that some of these, uh, like this one and this one, the Ampere Time in the Chins, five months in, holding a great charge. Lee Time, holding a great charge. Vatter dropped way down. That time USB that I showed you in the beginning dropped way down. Power Queen doing just fine. Red Odo way back there in the back doing just fine. But those are some significant differences. I'm going to have to guess that it's just the difference in cell quality is why some are discharging at a faster rate. They've all been sitting here, like I said, for the same amount of time roughly some of them much longer than others. So, uh, got that uh, time USB out there uh, being charged up right now. We're gonna charge it back fully up and then uh, this one's gonna get charged up fully next because it's, it's too low. So, yeah, if you got one of these sitting on the shelf that you charged up all the way to use for your emergency backup or however you planned it. Three months in, I would definitely go back and check them all, whatever you've got stored, and see how the voltage has dropped. You know, this was an experiment months in the making, but I was curious as I try to always show you guys uh, what is different between some of these batteries. And I did find a difference. I, I don't fully know what, what that all means. I think they're going to all charge up and be just fine, and I'm going to do that. And I will keep running various experiments to show you guys what I can find out. Help you guys make some decisions. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this comparison video. I mean, we've all been told to... If you're going to do some long-term storage, 
you know, 50% is good to store your batteries, but if you've got it stored at 50% and you let it sit there for a few months and you go to actually need it and pull it out of there, I don't know. Raises a few questions. Like I said, I did start all of those at full charge for my own experiment here. I hope you guys gleaned some uh, useful information for your use out of it. And we will keep testing these things and showing you what we find out out here. All right, everybody. Springtime and babies. <laughs> I'm zoomed in. All right, there we go. Aloha.